Bible says the Holy Spirit is like a friend, a comforter, someone who helps you and guides you. But when we hear the words Holy Spirit, we typically think of something mysterious, something controversial. So who is he? And why is he so misunderstood? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's get started here this morning. Father, we give you thanks because we know that you're a good God. And Lord, I'm thankful to be able to talk and preach today on a topic that's very important to your will and to your works, God. Talking about the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would help illuminate these things in the hearts of your people. And I know that that, Father, you're going to do great stuff this morning. And, Lord, we eagerly look forward to all that you're going to do in the days to come. And we know that you're coming back soon. And help us to be ready. And, Lord, make it abundantly clear whether we are or not. And, Lord, I pray that the convicting power, the convincing power, the correcting power, the controlling power, and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit Take root right now in the name of Jesus. We yield to your presence, Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit, that we don't have to pray to get the Holy Spirit, but I pray that the empowerment of heaven would come upon us and strengthen us in the name of Jesus and activate and activate our purpose with power. In Jesus' name, if you're in agreement, say amen. 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 So we are in a sermon series in, on the Holy Spirit. And there's been a lot of mix, misconceptions. How many have had some things straightened out for you theologically, maybe through this, this series right now? Because a lot of times we, what we thought about the Holy Spirit may be inaccurate sometimes. How many felt like you had to pray to receive the Holy Spirit? When we accept Jesus in our hearts, we get a deposit of the Spirit of God. They all work together, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we are to be baptized right into the Holy Spirit with power, and the Holy Ghost will come on us, and we will receive power. They're talking about that kind of dunamis power, dynamite power, explosive power, and a lot of times we pray for things that God's already given us. A lot of times we pray for understanding if we would just read our Bibles. Psalm 119, Father, I pray that eyes would be opened, that we would see the wonders in your word and understand your precepts and your laws, and you would give us strength and power to overcome every work of the devil. And not only that, we'd help others in their lives move forward in the things of God. Amen? And amen. So Jesus, in reference to the Holy Spirit, taught early that the Holy Spirit is like a river or a flow. Amen? Uh, if you forget, let's look at John 7, 37 through 39. It says, now on the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out, so not only did he stand up, he cried out, saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. Now, this is heavy duty. This isn't like, you know, everything's going to be all right. God will work it out. He says, if you're thirsty, in other words, if you're desperate, if you want something more, if you want to be satisfied, if you're dry, come to me. If you're sick of religion, 
Come to me. Because it's not about religion, it's about relationship. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ, not a religion of Jesus Christ. And that's the problem. There's a religious spirit that hinders the relationship. And you have to be full of that Holy Ghost to recognize that foul religious spirit that says you can't when Jesus says you can have a relationship with God. If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow, not river. See, here's where people get it. Not a river. Rivers. Rivers. Multiple directions. Multiple purposes. Multiple flows. One flow in, many flows out. You're not limited to one thing because God's not a limited God. We serve on an unlimited God which makes access unlimited and your potential unlimited in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter what man says about you, his opinion of you, his purpose for you. You're not in a church that wants to create a ministry and stick you in there. You're in a church that is looking to pull the ministry out of you. You're created with purpose. Say that I, I am created with purpose. That's correct. But sometimes there's things that block the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the number one thing is sin. Sin will keep you from full access. Sin will keep you from full, fully realizing your potential. Sin will keep you out of the game and put you on the bench. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. Rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit. So he's likening the flow of a river to the flow of the Spirit. Whom those believed in him were to receive. And I'd say this, if you can't believe it, you'll never receive it. If you don't believe in the flow of the Holy Spirit, you'll never, you'll never have a flow. You'll hold things back. You'll get in the way. I was always taught that we need to pray every day to be filled up in the Spirit because we leak. We leak. You ever heard that? We leak. We need to pray. Fill up every day. We leak. And, then, and that just says that one day if you don't pray, you're going to be empty. The reason you leak is because there's something blocking the flow. So get it out of the way and you won't leak anymore. You will flow. But you need to fill up every day so that you can flow every day. You need a pipeline coming in and many pipelines coming out. Believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Isaiah mentioned this, tying this back. So basically, Jesus is uh, 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 connecting some things to the old Spirit. How many know that Jesus knew the, the Scriptures? They would read them. Every good Jew knew the Scriptures. Isaiah 58, 11, it says, And the Lord will continue continually guide you. That's one of the greatest works of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit guides us. We have a guide inside of us. It's a compass. But a lot of times we like to go our own way. And then we want to blame God. And God says, I've given you the Spirit. You shouldn't be off base. You should be 
in the sweet spot of life. How many know there's a sweet spot in life? You don't have to miss it all the time. Matter of fact, with every hand raised in here right now, I prophesy over you today that you will never miss it ever again in the name of Jesus, that you will hear the voice of God, that God would remove everything that hinders and that you would have a full pipeline flowing out of you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 58, 11, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desires. I'm reminded of the scripture, if you seek me and you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. You know what the Lord wants to give you? The desires of your heart. When you find the Lord, you find a man that will give you the desires of your heart. Ladies, Stop looking for another man to fulfill your desires. God will grant you the desires of your heart. Stop grabbing on to anything that moves. Stop looking and start asking. I'm telling you one thing. It's better to have a wife that God has given you than a wife that you gave yourself. I want to go off right here, but I'm not. <laughs> Just real quick. <laughs> oh, you know me. <laughs> and half of you are like, it's not going to be real quick. No, real quick, you know, for all these single people. You don't think that God's got somebody for you? We're created to have relationship. You're not created to be alone. If you have Jesus, number one, you're never alone. And if you have the Holy Spirit, so there's like two people in your life, and then God the Father is three. And we know that a three-chord strand can't be easily broken. You know, I, th I, think, I think you may have been out of touch with your desires because if you ask God and you're right with God, the Bible says that you can ask anything in him and he'll give it to you. So you need to be specific, and we're going to talk about this in a minute because this is going to tie in very well. You need to be specific, descriptive, and intentional, and remind him every day that you are going to give me the desires of my heart. My desire is for you, but I'd like this too. It's not good for man to be alone. You said that in your word. You created Eve out of Adam's rib. And last time I checked, men are missing a rib. So all you felt, where my rib at? I got my rib. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, I haven't done. Are men missing more than one rib? I think so, but anyways. Sounded good. I'm going to go with it. But here, bottom line is this. You don't think that God can create somebody specifically just for you? That he knows that would bless you and help you? That, that understands your design and your destiny? So the two can become one flesh. You just need to be happy in your singleness. So you can be happy in your coupledness. That's all I'm going to say about that. Ask and you shall receive.
Satisfy your desire in a scorched places and give strength to your bones. If you're weak, you're doing something wrong. God will strengthen you. How do I know that? Because I watched a 92. How, how old are you, Yaya? 93 this month. R ridiculous. You like... We should have her pray over everyone. Impartation. Come on. Somebody want to receive that? But anyways, I, I've got these like couple big steps at my house, and, and they're tough to get up and down. <laughs> and she's just... I remember she dropped off some cookies. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I bet, I bet she scares her daughters to death. <laughs> she took right off on a boom, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's strength to your bones. That the Lord will give you strength. The Lord can add years to your life. The Lord can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever think or imagine. So when I read scriptures like this that says it'll give strength to your bones, I believe it. Because the only part of the Bible that will work for you are the parts that you can believe. I don't believe that. Then it's not going to work for you. You just stay frail. Stay weak. Like most churches weak and sick pastor's not here this morning he's not feeling well he's sick I can't tell you how many times early on when that stupid devil tried to put sickness on me before I started to get into this pulpit matter of fact I, I got out of bed I was sweating I was coughing I could barely speak I put my clothes on. I said, I'm going to preach this thing today. The Lord's going to uh, empower me to get that job done because I'm not going to call somebody last second and stick them in the pulpit. Some pastors will just get a word ready in case I, I, I get sick. Well, that probably happened then because that's what you're believing God for. Just being prepared. <laughs> you prepare for disaster. I'm preparing for God's best and God's blessings in Jesus' name. <laughs> got up, got in the car. By the time I got to this pulpit, it was gone in the name of Jesus. And I preached it like I never preached it before. Matter of fact, I felt like I preached myself happy. Because God will give us strength. And it says that you will be like a watered garden. Spirit, guide, satisfaction, strength, water, and a garden. So the Old Testament is a shadow of what's to come in the New Testament. The New Testament looks back towards the cross. The Old Testament looks forward to the cross. How many know the Old and New Testament work together? If we didn't need the Old Testament, God wouldn't have let it stick around. The New Testament doesn't cancel out the Old Testament. It fulfills it in Jesus' name. You see, under, understanding the foreshadow of the Old Testament illuminates the New Testament. You should read the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament. And you should read the New Testament through the lens of the Old Testament. Because you will see Jesus, the Father God, and the Holy Spirit all over the entire Bible. Give me eyes to see, Lord. You see, there's a garden in the Old Testament with rivers. Genesis 2 talks about the river that flowed from Eden into the gardens. And from there, divided into four rivers. And we, just, and we determined to investigate that. And we realized that maybe, just maybe, those rivers and the names of those rivers had some sort of spiritual implication and tied into that which Jesus was speaking of. And we talked about these rivers. The first one being the, the Pishon. 
Pishon means increase or full flowing. There's a fullness. God is not a God of scarcity and lack, but a God of abundance. He is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. And there's a flow, an abundance that will come not only into you, but out of you. An abundance of the Spirit. Ephesians 3.19, Paul prayed that believers would be filled up with all fullness. The second river is the Gihon, in which we got into, we kind of ended there last time we were in the series, and we're going to ramp it up here today. Gihon means bursting forth or gushing. I've, I've learned, Gihon also means, it's also called the Valley of Grace or Valley of Paradise or Streams of Grace or streams of paradise, streams of blessings. You know that word grace in the New Testament is charis, which also means favor. Then also there's a river of a fullness or a fatness. And it's not talking about physical fatness. We're talking about spiritual fatness, that you can be fat in the spirit. That's so full of God's word that it's just it's a fatness about it's just you, you don't have to eat for like weeks, but you just got this fatness that could carry you through. <laughs> Only in America you can start talking about fatness and be because we have buffets. The okay corral. I mean the golden corral. King Buffet. The Apostle Paul said, I buffet my body. I buffet my body. But I thought that was interesting that this stream of grace, it also means to burst forth, Gihon, this bursting forth of grace. How many know that we can walk in the Spirit and God will bring us some, to some places and to some situations that ultimately would cause us to panic a little bit, oh, yeah. to be afraid. How many times did Jesus tell the disciples, do not be afraid? You know why? They were afraid. They were afraid. They were scared. You can get scared. But we know from the scriptures that God is a God of abundance. And from this day forward, you have got to know that even in your fears and even in your doubts, that God will show up. He'll deal with your fear first, and then he'll deal with that situation. But sometimes we delay the blessing of God. But there is a river that will come out of us of grace that I've seen people go through some stuff that it can only possibly be God because there's this grace that comes upon their life. That the power of God can come on you and give you an ability that in no ways you would have been able to do without him. Not only grace, favor. Because we can accomplish the purposes and plans of God without a little help. And God's favor can do more for us than we can ever do for ourselves. How many have ever got some mailbox money? I look at, Put your hand up, show people. Hey, mailbox money. Mail money in the mail that you weren't ex expecting. This young man right here just gave me a testimony. Listen, if God does things in your life, text me a, a two-minute uh, video testimony on your iPhone. I, I play those all the time because they strengthen and encourage me. If you're down today, you need to hear some testimonies in Jesus' name. How God does these things. How God provides. Charlie, come in. All worked up. Oh, man. 
oh man, I woke up this morning, I, I was really in pressure about my, my finals, and I woke up and there's this check on the counter. And I opened it up, and there was a check for 1,500 bucks. It came from a place that I owe money to. Oh, I took it right down and I cashed it. He showed me the receipt. It said $1,503.46. I said, Charlie, did you only have $3.46 in your account? How many know that he's a just in the right time kind of God? Come on, give him praise. Give the Lord some praise. Am I lying? He'll show up. It's a bursting forth. It's a grace that God would do for his people. Yeah. And favor. Say favor. favor. Some of us just don't need grace. We need the favor. We don't need God to come and fix some stuff up. We need God to show up and show off. There's nothing, nothing like testifying. There's nothing like telling of what God has done for you in your life. I got mailbox money from a life insurance company. I have no idea where it came from. 110 bucks, put it in the bank, cash it, don't even ask questions. <laughs> Wrong person, your fault. <laughs> and I ain't giving it back. $110 in the bank. Come on, right? With every hand, <laughs> oh, every hand lifted, I feel like to pray this right now. <laughs> Get this, right? Lord, I pray mailbox money for everybody that can believe this in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, I pray as quickly as by the end of this week, we'd hear a testimony after a testimony of how you put money in someone's mailbox in Jesus' name. Come on, give them praise. Right Thank them. understand that companies just sending checks out I had a check from mobile oil company the first one was like three dollars and I was like three dollars this is prosperity <laughs> no it's four dollars and and I remember I remember I said if you can't praise him for the four you ain't gonna get no more <laughs> I remember showing that check to my wife look four dollars she goes is that your idea of prosperity she flicked the check at me. I said, oh, oh, honey, honey, honey. Honey, we got to learn this lesson right now. Because if we can't praise him for the four, we ain't going to get any more. How many know that there's a flow that can start off with a trickle that can move a little faster and a little more increase? And there could be a busting or a gushing in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's your portion today, Lord. Give, the hand, give him a hand. Give the Lord a hand. You see, there's a supernatural flow from heaven that not only will increase as we walk in the Spirit, but also will overflow with grace and favor. Overflow with grace and favor. The Holy Spirit doesn't just want to do a great work in us. He also wants to do a great work through us. He'll give you more than enough. Not just money, but everything in life. He's a God of all gods. He is the great I am and he will be whatever you need him to be. John 4, 14, But whoever drinks of this water that I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors and sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well. We've got a well of the Spirit inside of us that wants to spring forth, wants to bust forth with grace and favor. So not only will it bring increase, it'll bring grace and favor. That's one of the greatest works of the Holy Spirit. If, if the devil can get people to reject the Holy Spirit, then they're rejecting all power and authority from heaven. And it starts with tongues. That jibby jabby jabby jab, you know what I mean? They can't believe it because it doesn't make sense to their, their, their rational mind. They, they, they can't put the God of this universe into their box. 
They said, God can't do that. That's just people being people. No, it, it, it could actually be God. Matter of fact, I, I, I know it to be God. And, and a lot of you felt that tongue this morning as the power of God. Because that was Holy Ghost. That was powerful. Let's give those two a hand for being sensitive to the Spirit. Because you've got to know that you've got to know that God is doing these things. You seen her crying as she's giving that up? Then the bursting forth, powerful word, right on track. I knew it was you. I knew it. Didn't know it was you, though. But it was powerful. Dynamic do well. See, it's a picture of this bubbling up. We're going to get into this third river here now and the fourth one. The third river, Hadekel, means quick, rapid, or swift. I found that interesting. The Holy Spirit doesn't need to take time and pray about whether or not he wants to help us. Amen. When we call upon him, he's there. Amen. We don't have to wait for him to show up. He's there, you know, just waiting on the Lord. I think the Lord's waiting on you. I've been praying. I've been waiting. You know what I mean? Stop praying and start going. Sometimes you've got to step out in order for God to step in. We've been, uh, had the two interns down there. I've been trying to figure out, how can we get these guys down here? We need a place. We need an apartment, you know? And, and, and you know the process to go through that. You've got to get, you know, first, last. You've got to do all that stuff, you know? Praise God. I've been beginning to pray. And uh, I tell you, just stepping out in faith, we, I, I made one call. I talked to one person. I began to get that off of my responsibility and began to spread it out. I began to speak it in faith. This is what we need to do. And God manifested an apartment just like that in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Give the Lord a clap, Robert. It's perfect. It, it meant everything that we prayed for right around the corner. Because time is short. These guys got two and a half months to come down here and get busy in Jesus' name. And God opened up the door. But you got to step out. You've got to trust God. You've got to move out first, and then it comes. Everybody wants it to come, and then they'll step out. Well, I'll become a missionary as soon as I can get all this support. I, I've seen missionaries forever still on the field trying to raise support. When you got older guys like John G. Lake that just went and God provided everything that they need, miracles, money, and finances, and uh, uh, provision, see, God will do all those things. Quickly and rapidly, you don't have to wait forever. Here's a great illustration that I, I found out at the wedding, okay? We we're, were at the wedding there, and uh, our cell service didn't work in the building. Couldn't get the thing to connect, but there was a, a, a Wi-Fi for the conference room that we were in. And it said, you know, Hilton's conference room. I said, I tried to put it on and put it on there. It wanted a passcode. Wanted a passcode. I, now, I could have just sat there and said, well, that's it. I don't need that. I'm not getting on there. Or I could ask. And I could get the passcode. And you could put the passcode in, and that'll give you access to everything that you need. Here's the illustration that God showed me on that. There's a lot of people that understand that there's a flow from heaven. But they don't know how to connect it. They don't know how to access it because they don't have the code. Ask, and you will receive. So it's like simple as opening up your mouth. Lord, give me the code. You want to know what the code is? The Holy Spirit will connect you to heavenly places. And he's not restricted. Not everybody has access. You want to know what the code is, the key? Holiness. Righteousness. Belief. You know what unlocks the supernatural with God? Faith. Faith. That's it. That's the starting point. Yes. Hedekel is actually a word picture of a swift arrow in flight. I found this powerful. When I thought about this, I realized that before an arrow is ever released from a bow, it is first of all aimed at a target. So many people have their bows aimed to the ground. 
or they don't have it pointed at a target at all. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. You got to remember that God has a plan and we have a target to hit. Well, I don't know the plan and the target here. I'm going to give you what we're all about here at Crossroads and what you should be all about, which would give you the purpose and everything that you need for life in abundance. We want to enable real people to have an experience with a real God. Enabling real people to experience the real God. That's your target. And if you aim at that target with the power of the Holy Ghost, you will have abundance, overflow, as long as you get your life lined up right with God. Amen. You will do exceed. God will do more through you than you can think. That's what the scriptures declare. You see, this river represents that in Christ we have purpose with power. The New Testament is clear that we are to be specific when we pray. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I say to you, all the things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. Lord, put somebody in my path that I can minister your gospel to. You don't think the Lord's going to put people on your path? Lord, give me eyes to see that what you're doing. Your eyeballs will be opened up. Lord, I need the resources to get done whatever. You just go and I'll provide the resources. We hear stuff like that, but we don't act on it. You can act upon the word of God. You see, prayer in the Holy Spirit releases God's power to accomplish God's plan in our lives. We are not to live aimless and ambiguous lives. We are a full, gushing, rapid, and purposeful extension of the most powerful trio in all the universe. The Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Paul said that he ran with purpose in every step. And that we are to walk in the Spirit. We are to be the power of God, like a swift arrow in the hands of God. Amen. Let me just say this before we move on about the arrow. The higher you set the arrow is the farther it goes. So get your arrow off the ground and don't just get a close target that you can hit every time. Get something that's it's out there. And let one rip. Let one rip. Trust him. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Euphrates means swift, I mean sweet or fruitful. It means fruitfulness. You see, if you have the full flowing, gushing, rapid, moving of the Holy Spirit in your life, guess what? You're going to be fruitful. God's going to be doing stuff in your midst. You're going to see the fruit or the evidence of what God's done. Look around. There's evidence of the hand and the power and the plan of God. And, and, and you folks, you guys are demon destroyers. Project cleanup. I've seen prayer all over the place for those people in the street. I've seen Nicole Rodriguez, see one lady on the street. Whoo! Letter to the Lord right there on the streets. Come on. Being sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Fruitful. But you see, you got to think of fruitfulness in terms that's not just water, but agriculturally. Fruit comes from a tree. A healthy tree. And so... Once we realize that we've got this working in our lives, Jesus spoke of bearing fruit in John 15. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Yeah. See, abiding has to be part of the fruit bearing. For apart from me, you can do nothing, the scriptures say. Back it up, John 15, 2, get this, right? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So that it may bear more fruit. You see, everybody wants to bear fruit, but nobody wants to get pruned. God's hand comes down to try to grab us. We're like that parakeet in the cage. Don't touch me. 
I know you're going to clip my nails. The dog, you're going to put me in the bath. Kids at the doctor. And then they get paranoid. They're just trying to help. That's what God wants to do. Help bear fruit. Pruning. Nobody likes pruning. Ow. <laughs> Has anybody been pruned in here? <laughs> anybody that's bearing fruit has been pruned. <laughs> the gardener is going to come and prune your tree. John 15, 7 speaks of asking, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You know, the best part about being pruned is you can ask. Ow, I'm asking. John 15, 8, my father is glorified by this so that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. There's a proving, there's a pruning. And there's an asking. This fruit that God uses in our lives brings glory to the Father. Amen. And then John 15, 11 speaks of connecting. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. With everybody standing, my joy may be in you. If there is no joy, we need to reconnect. Quiet. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to not be afraid of being pruned. When God begins to remove things in your life because you are stubborn and unwilling to do them yourself. Did I say that? I said that. Don't get mad, get glad because he loves you and he's caring for you and God cares for those he loves and God loves us all. Pruning is not a bad thing. Pruning ends up in a proving thing. He'll prune you to prove to you that he's all powerful, he's almighty and that he has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't be afraid to ask God for things because he'll do them for you. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. He wants to enable you and he wants to empower you. In closing, Psalm 1 says, how blessed is the man who does not receive counsel from the wicked nor does he stand in the way of sinners, nor does he sit in the seat of mockers. No. His delight is in the law of the Lord upon which he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by the rivers or by the streams. in which he bears fruit in every season, yes, Lord. whose leaf does not wither. And in everything he does, he prospers. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know true prosperity. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know true power. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know much. And I want to give you an opportunity today. I want, I want, if, if I made any sense to you today, and you're ready to give Jesus your heart, and you're ready to stop doing things your way, I need you to put your hand up high. Put your hand up high. It's about getting things right. It's not doing things wrong. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anymore. Anymore, this is the most important part of this service is helping people get close to God, helping people get right with God. Because if you're not saved, you're not safe. 
I mean, there was just a shooting, uh, that Christina Grimes or whatever, that singer. Guy pulled out and whipped out and shot her. And then blew his head off or shot himself. You never know. Your salvation isn't something to gamble with. It's not something to deliberate on. You're here on assignment today. We're a church that believes in the saving power of Jesus Christ. And that the same God that saved me will save you. Yeah, keep an eye on that guy. If you raised your hand and you meant business, I'd ask that you get out of your seat and you join me right down here. Take another step. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on right down here, sir. God bless you. God bless you, dear. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. Power of God's working on this side, but I know it worked over here too. Come on, anybody over here? Come on, let this be the day. Heaven rejoices. Don't be scared. Come to Jesus. If you're thirsty, come to Jesus. Anybody else? Hallelujah. One last second. Anybody else before we pray? God bless you, sir. You don't have to be afraid of Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Pray this for me. Say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. I'm sorry that I ever doubted you. And I know that you love me. Please know that I love you. I came forward today to show you that I love you. And I'd asked that you wipe away all my sins, that you'd cleanse me, that you would wash me, and that you'd make me brand new. Enter my heart and change my life and, and allow me to be a part of your kingdom. For I know that I was fearfully and wonderfully made, and now I am yours. And I thank you that you have power to do these things. Receive me into your kingdom as I receive you into my heart and put my name in the Lamb's book of life forever. I pray in Jesus' name. You know what? You're a Christian. Say that with me. Say, I am a Christian. Now say it with some authority. Say, I am a Christian. Now let the devil know it. Say, I, I am, am a Christian. And I'm going to kick your rear end. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. All right. In closing, uh, Enzo's going to come over. He's got something for you. Here's got a little thing. And if you guys can just go with him that way, just everybody go that way. They're going to take you right around to the Connection Center. We just want to make sure that we, you know, if you need a Bible, we want to get you one. We want to help. Well, let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. You missed it, my man. With every hand now stretched towards heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you bless your people, and we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would be made manifest. And, Lord, we're thankful for all that you've done, all that you're doing, but more importantly, all that you're going to do. As we party next week, God, remember, we love you, and we know that you love us. Now put those people in our place, and let's not forget about the mailbox money in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Go and sin no more. See you next week.
It's a shortened service coming shorts and ready to go down to Simon Park. It's going to be 85 degrees and sunny.